near my relation to keep for her. Why should that distant brother be the keeper of her box, while her husband is ignorant of the whole affair? Who authorizes the woman to claim, she bought this pot or that knife for her husband or that she brought these things from her parents' house? In fact, the wife has nothing of her own. All she has belongs to the husband also. From the day your husband takes you away from your parents, with all your knowledge, beauty from head to toe, with all your vices and virtue, you belong to him all in all. It becomes your bounding duty to take his instructions. If you cling to your old habits, without allowing them to be modified or eradicated by him, you are exposed to danger. Any woman who considers it difficult to regard her husband as her own father had better stay back as spinster for she cannot be a housewife. But today, who among black and white women will not throw back five for one word of rebuke from the husband? How many women abide by the advice of their husbands? How many regard their husbands as their lords? Apart from Christ, the wife has no other kin than her husband. The parents are not as important to the woman as her husband. Respect. Any woman, whether black or white, who respects her husband respects Christ, and any woman who submits to her husband submits to Christ. Why then, should women who are married wear their marriage rings to go and mess up with other men? I wonder, why such women should be called human beings any longer? All your body belongs to your husband exclusively. Even you have no right to converse with another man on the road, without the permission of your husband. You have no power of your own. You have no right to wear anything you like, or to appear anyhow, or in any fashion your husband does not approve of. Husband's permission. You are not permitted to plan or think differently from your husband. It is a sin for you to give anybody a penny without the permission of your husband. You are not permitted to argue with him. As the heaven is high above the earth, so is the man's wisdom above that of the woman. Some women assume too much for the fact that some of them are queens, ministers or prime ministers. All these are meant to be controlled by men, their position notwithstanding. Education has nothing to do in marriage. Money does not give a woman a mandate to be above her husband. Nothing does. There are some women who think, once they have used their beauty to entrap a man into marriage, they are free afterwards to behave, as they like, hoping to use their beauty as an irresistible influence. But I tell you such women had better gone to hell with their beauty. It were better they are called beauty dying, submitting it under the husband's feet for the sake of happy marriage, than to face the consequences of the misuse of their beauty in marriage for they are bound to suffer in the end. There is another set of women who want to live a free life, and hope to succeed more by having men they simply call husband. They, therefore, use their money to engage poor, simple men who they hope to control with the influence of money favors. This is a grievous sin for any woman to commit. It does not show the wife's submission to the husband, and is not conducive to love and happy marriage. Divorce. There are others who think they can desert their husbands at any time they like, and take up new husbands. Some divorce their husbands and go to stay in, where they call convenient homes. And you foolish woman, where do you want to go? Where your husband stays is your town and your home. It is your heaven. From the day your parents surrendered you to a man in marriage, your parents and relations have no right over you, but your husband has every right over you. Give him food. Women should know, God uses their husbands to test, whether they can serve him, give him food and cloth, because something done by the wife to the husband is something done to Christ. You should be like a loving child to your husband. A woman's business is husband's. Nothing else should concern a wife than her husband. A woman has no other business than her husband. To be a judge is nothing to her. To be a queen is nothing to her. The glory of a woman is her husband. He is her sole business. If your husband is not asleep, you should not sleep. It is your duty to watch with him. When necessary you should watch over him. When your husband is ill, you are ill with him. His health is your health. And as the church submits unto Christ, so all women are supposed to submit to their husbands. Any woman who refuses to do this has direct punishment from God. Golden Text, 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 8. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. The love we have for our wives should be full of humility and sympathy and peace. These qualities should mark our conversations and actions towards them. Your joy and sorrows should be shared in the spirit of love and oneness. Your parents in loves are your parents also. A husband should not do anything without seeking the mutual consent of his wife. 
Christ cannot dwell where there is a division. But where both couples are united and surrender themselves to the will of God, Christ is their bridegroom and is ready to provide their temporal and spiritual needs. And they are merely brother and sister. That is, why we say, in the strict sense of the word no man should be called a husband. Christ alone is a husband, while husband and wife are brother and sister. Happy home. Therefore there must be Christ in every happy home. There must be singleness of mind, compassion, love and pity between husband and wife. Any person who cannot take care of his house cannot take care of the house of God. Whoever prays for a successful marriage life, happy home, children of promise, should take this gospel as the only condition. Those who have ears to hear let them hear, may the Lord bless the preaching of his holy word. Amen. Thank you Father.